Uh, it's now my pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Yvette Johnson to you. Many here at TCH, of course, know her. Uh, Dr. Johnson is an assistant professor of pediatrics here at Baylor in our section in neonatology. She is a medical director of the uh, perinatal outcomes database within our section. Uh, this includes both the Vermont Oxford Network database as well as the CHND uh, databases. Uh, she is also the team leader for several QI initiatives within the sections, such as uh, our current Vermont Oxford Network uh, NICU 7 Golden Hour Collaborative to improve management of infants in the delivery room, and the new CHND CLABSI initiative, which we are really rolling into this uh, CUSP uh, project uh, throughout the year. Now, in this project, we really will combine these two efforts, um, and uh, I'm very, very happy that the Yvette has taken on that role and will be helping uh, us to reduce infection rates as well as uh, provides her insights into data management and decreasing infections uh, for our partners in Mexico. Please welcome uh, Dr. Yvette Johnson. Thank you. Good afternoon. So I'll be presenting the clinical quality improvement aspect of this project that will run concurrently with CUSP, as uh, Dr. Prophet mentioned. And this will focus on reducing central line associated bloodstream infections. We call ourselves slug bugs, uh, standardizing cent central line care under guideline recommendations. We're sponsored by the uh, CHCA, the Children's Hospital Corporation of America, and the subset of that, the quality improvement arm of that is the CHNC, which is Children's Hospital National Con uh, Neonatal, I'm sorry, Consortium. Okay, and then we will also be partnering with our, uh, uh, the hospital in, in Monterey. So the purpose of this project is to implement the components of the central line clinical practice recommendations with a focus on reducing local CLABSI rates throughout all of the CHNC centers. The overall aims of the collaborative are to reduce our CLABSI rates in infants in the NICU by 15 percent, and that's collaborative-wide, within 12 months of implementation of these recommendations, and to achieve 90 percent compliance with all of the central line care uh, recommendations. So the purpose in attempting to reduce CLABSI infections, we will focus on several key areas, including hand hygiene in the NICU, central line insertion, care, maintenance, and line removal. What's unique about this collaborative is in its design. Um, we, we recognize that there isn't any one intervention to reduce CLABSIs that has proven to be the most, having the greatest impact on uh, CLABSI rates. Rather, it's probably a combination of factors. And what this collaborative will do is look at a variety of combinations that will have the greatest impact on reducing uh, CLABSI rates. And they'll be using a unique factori factorial design analysis method uh, called the seven-factor design matrix, which are the seven interventions that, will be, that I'll discuss later. We'll also have compliance monitoring where we will be reporting our, our hand hygiene compliance rates. Uh, we'll be using an insertion checklist for central line insertion, uh, the use of a sterile tubing change, which will be new for us, and assessment of central line removal, removal is, and I'll explain later, sort of a daily assessment of the need for a central line. We'll also be reporting our uh, data in the IHI website, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, in order for us to track our individual progress, but also to compare ourselves and benchmark ourselves throughout the collaborative. Uh, now, the Hospital of Monterey won't be part of this particular collaborative. We'll be partnering directly with them, and they will implement uh, elements of the bundle that will be unique to their hospital. So this is the key driver diagram and the, the list of the seven interventions with our overall goal to reduce CLABSI rates with these, three, these four areas, which will be our primary focus. And we'll focus on the use of the insertion checklist, uh, uh, specific timing of uh, hub scrub time and dry time, uh, sterile dressing changes, tubing changes, limitations on the use of the central line use and access, as well as a standard approach to central line removal. So as I mentioned, we'll, we'll, as part of this collaborative, we'll be looking at a combination of interventions. There are seven interventions, three of which will be common throughout the collaborative. All sites will be doing them, and I'll explain that. But these four, the hub care, tubing change, limitations on access, and line removal will be sort of scrambled throughout all of the sites that will be participating. 
we're Team I. And our hospital in Monterey, because they're not part of the collaborative, will pick a, a similar combination that will be unique to their site. And what we want to look at in the, at the end of this collaborative is to find out, again, what combination works best to have the greatest impact in reducing CLABSI rates. So the common elements will be compliance with hand hygiene before and after patient contact, and we'll be monitoring that. And this will serve as a control for background variables. There will be compliance with the utilization of the insertion checklist and a unit policy for central line sterile dressing change. So those would be the common elements. All of the sites will be reporting to the IHI website, our total central line days, as well as our CLABSI rates. And we'll also be looking concurrently at our total late onset infection rates that we report to Vermont Oxford. So the elements of the four-factor design matrix include the hub care compliance. So each site was randomized to one of two arms, one where compliance is monitored uh, monthly, and there's a unit-based policy for scrub, uh, uh, hub scrub and dry time uh, with the goal of being 15 seconds each using either 70 percent alcohol or chloroprep, and I think Stacy can correct me, I think we're using something different, but that we have some flexibility, uh, versus no compliance. The other factor would be tubing change. We'll be randomized to either sterile technique or clean technique. We were actually randomized to the sterile technique, which is new for our site, which is full glove, mask, and sterile barrier versus clean, which is just the use of clean gloves. Third element would be limitations on the central line access, which uh, each site will be randomized to high or low level, where we're actually putting strict uh, unit policy uh, restrictions on access to the central lines unless there are special circumstances or special situations such as unable, inability to get a peripheral um, IV or to obtain uh, blood after a, a certain number of attempts or by written order versus no limitations on the frequency of line entry. In fact, we were randomized to the low level. We have sort of a hybrid where we have some restrictions but no specific unit policy on um, uh, access. And finally, the, the fourth factor in this matrix is the central line removal assessment. We were randomized to assignment one where we will implement a process for a daily assessment of the need for the line, a review of complications, any unnecessary entry into the line, and to establish patient-specific goals for removal along with compliance monitoring. And this will be done on daily rounds. We'll have a smart text with an epic that we want people to document uh, when they round versus randomization to no specific policy. So those are the four elements that will be varied among each site. And for our monitoring and reporting, we will have uh, 10 staff observations per month, a minimum, uh, 10 self-observations, individuals reporting on their own compliance with these initiatives. We'll report, well, our goal for all of these initiatives would, to have, would be to achieve greater than 90 percent compliance with all of these interventions. We will report our results to the staff. And what will also be common is the root cause analysis of the RCA, which we're all familiar with because we do this anyway, where any confirmed CLABSI will be reviewed uh, by a formal reaction team to look at potential for contributing factors to the CLABSI. So uh, for the, the CLABSI project here at TCH, we have had the VAT team, the hospital-wide uh, team, and a dedicated nursing team for uh, central lines or PIC lines in particular for a while, and a number of the initiatives that are part of this collaborative have already been implemented. But we're excited about participating because we always see room to do better. Um, and there are three initiatives that will be new for us. As I mentioned, the daily assessment of the need for the central line. So we have developed a smart text within EPIC that we're asking everybody to complete daily, and that will be how we document our compliance monitoring and to document why the central line is needed or document removal. Uh, we will now undertake sterile tubing change, and this is something that Stacy Norris and her team will engage on a, a staff-wide teaching and education process that we call Just in Time, where they'll use a modified simulation method by taking small groups and actually simulating on a mannequin the sterile tubing change, and they'll repeat that until they receive 100 percent accuracy, and this will be rolled out on a, every two-month or every three-month basis, in addition to workshops and small group in-services. And then finally, the compliance with the hand hygiene that we'll be monitoring and reporting about 20 observations per month, along with continuing our current practices. So I want to close by presenting to you our CLABSI rates or CLABSI trends over time since 2008 when we've been uh, formally documenting them or recording them. And this blue line uh, is our CLABSI rates. And when, when folks went back in 2008 to look at our rates, 
which are reported as rate per thousand line days, we found that they were really unacceptably high, about five per thousand line days. So a number of quality improvement initiatives have, were implemented in the uh, NICU level three, and I think uh, level two also, uh, to address this concern, and it was a clear target for quality improvement. And as you can see, over the four-year period, we've done a stellar job in reducing our CLABSI rates from about five per thousand to about one to two per thousand. Uh, so, I mean, this is the trend that you want to see. And this bar graph shows uh, the trend in CLABSI rates over that four-year period in conjunction with a number of quality improvement initiatives. So going from 4.7 to 1.2 is very good, but we feel this isn't good enough. Uh, we. On, on an individual patient level or family level, as we've seen, the impact of any single late onset infection or central line infection is significant, as well as long-term morbidities that are associated with that. So we have a stretch goal where we want to achieve zero. We want to have a culture with the overlap of the CUSP project, a, a culture that has a zero tolerance policy for any late infection or, or central line infection because we feel uh, many of them are preventable. And this is doable even in a large quaternary center like ours. Other centers have done it. And we think that with a multidisciplinary team, zero CLABSI rate can be achieved. Thank you.